The world is a frightening place. How are we to navigate the perils that lurk out there? How can a person spot dangers, hazards, threats? Well, the British Army has some advice for its soldiers concerning what they should take note of while they're on patrol in a hostile environment. The first thing the soldiers are told to look out for is the absence of normal, i.e. the sudden disappearance of children or women or traffic from the streets, the removal of sheep or goats from the rural landscape, those things that should be there suddenly not being there. The second phenomenon they are warned to be vigilant about is what the army refers to as the presence of abnormal, meaning the abrupt appearance of things that shouldn't be there suddenly being there. Unfamiliar pickup trucks, hard-faced men in black robes showing up on street corners trying to look like itinerant balloon sellers, or a girl pushing her older brother in a wheelchair. On the surface, the very epitome of filial devotion. Jason, people see my gorgeous hair and my lovely clothes and my perfect nails and they think, I bet that girl only thinks of herself, but they are so wrong. And they think that I can't be a spiritual person, but they don't see that I've literally got a tattoo that says, push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you on my ass. How inspirational is that? How freaking spiritual is that? Yeah, but I literally do need somebody else to push me because I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah, but if I wasn't spiritual, would this woodland be my favourite place in the whole of Liverpool? People assume when I take you out in your wheelchair that we'll go along the prom by the river or down to the shops. But I like to go out of our house in St Michael's Hamlet and down towards this path which leads to this place which I call the Nameless Park. I just love these beech and chestnut trees. See, I've learnt their names. And how they, like, form a canopy over the path. I love these Australian and Japanese weeds that accidentally came over with the plants in the Liverpool Garden Festival they had in the 80s. The one that was supposed to stop poverty or something in the city. Other people think they're ugly, but I see their true beauty. Look at those black leaves, aren't they fantastic? Whenever you are feeling down, remember to count your blessings and you shall smile again. Yeah, I think you might have said that before. You know what your problem is? Um, swelling of the face, hands and feet, abdominal pain, muscular spasms, and having to have dialysis every week. Oh, you're one of those people who doesn't see the real me. But I do, honest. Sorry, sis. <sighs> they say it all changed after the capsule culture later this year, but right now, it's neglected. Left alone. Of course, they said everything had changed after the Garden Festival, but it didn't. Apart from the poisonous foreign weeds, nothing's different. You see, that's one of the things I love about this place. Because it doesn't have a name, it can be anything I want it to be. When I walk through those old sandstone gateposts with those weird-looking Celtic-looking crosses carved into them, I feel like I could be anywhere. I could be in a fairy tale or an expensive shampoo advert. You are spiritual. This is my own private paradise, Jason. You're lucky I bring you here at all. No, oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Oh. 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 oh, damn bloody tree root. I'm so sorry that keeps happening. Uh, uh, not, not to worry, sis. I, I'm fine. I'd help you up into the chair, but you're heavy. I know. And I've just had my nails done. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, oh, well done, Jason. Uh, you know what I'm done? I'm just going to pop to a cafe. I'll take you with me, but, you know, it's very bumpy down that way. And you don't want me tipping you out of the chair again. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh, you'll be all right here for ten minutes, won't you? Uh, yeah, sure. Don't be too long, mind. It looks like it could rain. In a bit. See that battered old van that's always parked up just beyond the locked gates of the Garden Festival site? And that tattooed man who sits inside smoking with his very large brown dog padding around outside. Your presence drives the dog mad, and it flings itself at the bent and corroded bars at the gate, 
Growling and snarling, frothy slobber flying from its furious jaws. One day, the bars will break and the dog will get out. I wonder what will happen after that. See you soon, sis. One into town, please. That'll be one pound fifty. Go into the shop screen. Yeah, probably. It's down to rain. I hope Jason and his sister don't get caught in it. Oh, look at the time. I need to head into town. What are you up to? Do you not remember? I've got a test drive booked for the new BMW 6 Series Coupe. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I know we've got the Range Rover and the Mini, but uh, I just fancied something just for me, you know. All right, you treat yourself, love. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's clear. Hello? Mr. Savari? Yep. It's Dr. Keyes. Uh, I wanted to speak to you just because we've got the rest of Jason's tests back. Right. Now, I don't want you to panic, but we've noticed a couple of things in the last set of tests Jason had which are quite worrying, so we'd like you to bring him back in. What? Right, OK. Uh, let me get me down. No, we'd like Jason to come back today. Right away. Now. Oh, I see. Well, um, he's out on a walk with his sister. We'll go and pick him up and bring him straight to the clinic. I do think that would be best. All right, Doctor. Leave it with me. What is it? Dr Keynes. She says we need to take Jason back there right away to the Lourdes Clinic. They need to do more tests. Is it an emergency? No. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Come on, let's go pick them up. I'll call them. Hi, Mum. Jason. Are you OK, love? Yeah, sure. Where are you? In the park. Sefton Park? No, the, uh, the other one. The, the no. nameless one. Everything all right? I can hear a dog barking. Oh, it's fine. That's just a dog barking. Listen, love. We're coming to pick you up. All right, Grace. Can you put your sister on? Not really. Why not? She's not here. She's, she's, she's gone to a cafe. But it's raining. It's all right. She's got an umbrella. But what about you? Uh, I think she's bringing me a lassie. Whereabouts are you? I'm by the entrance opposite the Old Garden Festival. All right, love. Keep trying. Okay, Mum. Won't be long. Careful? I'm being as careful as I can. Where are they? At that park she likes to go to. Which one? It doesn't have a name. You know the one where they had the garden festival thing that time? What are they doing there? I don't know. She seems to love it. They're on the far side by the gates. Well, well Jason is. I'm going to find out where the other one is. You're right. Where are you? In the park. With Jason. Jason said you'd left him. No, well, I went to a cafe. On my way back to him now. Got him a latte. We're coming to pick you up. We need to get him to the clinic. Is it an emergency? Yes. No. Yes. Hi, Jason. Hi, sis. Sorry, you lost track of time. Don't worry about it. I got you a latte. Oh? Where is it? <laughs> Dropped it. Sorry. It's Mum and Dad. Oh, yeah, uh, great. All right, you two. Hi. Hi. We need to get you in the car. Oh, look at you, Jason. You're soaked. I'm OK. Oh. Darling, you'll be get your brother in the car. Yep, of course, Dad. No problem. And after that, let's me and you go into town, yeah? Get our <laughs> hair done and stuff while Dad takes Jason to the clinic. So tell me, Jason, how are you feeling now? I sort of feel OK now, Doctor. Well, you know, as OK as I ever feel. Of course. Now, as you know, we've become more concerned since the incident last week when you fell out of your wheelchair. It did seem that you had some kind of seizure. Right. You were due to come in for your monthly checkup this Friday anyway, so this has just sped things up a little. We'll do some more tests now and see where we are. 
So I've got your notes here. Uh, so you're still having your weekly dialysis at the hospital? Yeah. No problems there? No. It's time consuming and all that, but it keeps me alive, so yeah, it's fine. I can see you've got some swelling around your eyes. How long have you had that? Comes and goes, but the last few days it has got worse. He's been getting muscle cramps as well, haven't you, son? Yeah, uh, swollen feet, swollen belly. It, it, it all seems to be a bit worse these days. It, you know, sometimes I, I feel like such a bird and... Nonsense. I wonder, Mr Savari, have you considered having a live-in nurse for Jason? Someone to help with the care and so on? Well, we do have Jason's sister. Oh, of course. Yeah, she's devoted to Jason. Can't do enough for him, can she, son? No. Ah, they're very close. She's always taking him off for walks. Never complains, does she? No. You're very lucky to have her. To have a sister. I mean, she's just 18, but you think with the makeup and the hair and the clothes and everything, well, at least 25. We're all very lucky. Jason's mum and her daughter spent a lot of time shopping for clothes and getting their hair done. Invariably, they get their hair done first at Herbert of Liverpool, the most fashionable salon in the whole city. For shopping, they especially loved to go to Cricket, which was the smartest boutique on Cavern Walk and was where all the footballers' girlfriends went. When they emerged, weighed down with shopping bags, they would get the bus home to save money. Hello, ladies. Welcome to Herbert. Hello. Uh, we haven't booked her anything, but can you fit us in? I'm thinking of having a light trim and, and she's undecided. I'm thinking streaks. Oh, yes, of course. We can fit you in any time. Lovely. If you'd just like to take a seat here, our stylist will be with you shortly. Thank you. Can I get you some coffees or a glass of Chardonnay? Ooh, glass of Chardonnay, please. Is that all right, Mum? Yeah, fine. Two glasses of Chardonnay, please. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. It won't be a moment. Kai, can you do us two glasses of Chardonnay, please? Um, why are you giving them pear Chardonnay? They didn't book her anything and we're slammed. Keep your voice down. That's Mike Savari's wife and daughter. So? Mike Savari is the wealthy owner of three insanitary tenant salons, two inefficient and unpleasant hand car washes, and a number of highly unpopular city centre fruit stores that offer very poor value for money. Oh, Christ, you mean he's a gangster? He's one of Liverpool's biggest. Which means one of Europe's biggest. Give me them glasses. <coughs> there you go, ladies. Two lovely glasses of Chardonnay. Carlos, our stylist, will be with you shortly. Oh, lovely, thank you. I love it here, Mum. Well, Herbert's is so much more than a hair salon. It's an experience. I'm defo thinking streaks. Mm, you'd suit streaks. That's what I was thinking. Hey, see who that is over there? Isn't she married to that footballer? Where? <gasps> oh, yeah, that's uh, Rachel. Her and Everton defender Leighton Baines have been sweethearts in school. Oh, yeah, I remember. She dotes on him, and he dotes on her. The way she's having her hair done is gorgeous. Isn't it? I was just going to say that. I try even mind on like her. You should. I reckon you'd look gorgeous. Here, love, look at this dress. Oh, Mum, that is gorgeous. Are you thinking for me or thinking for you? I'm well, not sure yet. Let's both try it on. See who wears it best. <laughs> Oh, these red boots, aren't they gorgeous? Do you want them? I'd love them. Well, let's get them then. The gorgeous. <laughs> They've got so much gorgeous stuff in here, though. Hey, see who that is over there? Isn't she married to the lead singer of the Zootons? You know, um, oh, God, what's his name? Dave McKay. Where? Oh, yeah, that's her. That's Mercedes. She used to work in fashion herself. That top she's looking at is nice. I try one of those on. Look at this dress. Oh, I love how floaty it is. Now that is gorgeous. Isn't it? Is it Mark Jacobs or Stella McCartney? How much is it? It's nine hundred pound. Right. Do you want it, Mum? I'd love it. Well, let's get it then. <gasps> it's gorgeous. Oh, thanks, Mum. Well, look at the time. We best not be too much longer. Ooh, what about this top? That is gorgeous. You're so good to me, Mum. I've got everything. You and credit cards and all the clothes and shoes and boots and hair products and acrylic nails. Everything I could wish for. But sometimes 
I see you looking at me with sadness, and I think I know why. Why? Well, Jason, your firstborn, has been such a disappointment being so sickly and uninteresting all the time. So you lavish all your love on me, and that sometimes makes you sad. And I love all the stuff you buy me, but I want you to know I am working on my spirituality as well, Mum. I strive to be a better person. No matter the amount of negativity that comes your way, smile, because you are still alive. Nothing is more precious than life. That's very true, love. We only want what's best for you and Jason. You should buy Jason something nice. His life's very hard. Oh, we will, love. Someday, we'll all give him something very special. When the time's right. You know, my wife Linda has always disliked this story. She thinks it's too nasty and also somewhat derivative. I shout at her, what do you know? I won the BBC Audio Drama Award for Best Scripted Comedy in 2019. Then I get in my car and I drive to a unit I rent in one of those storage places on a bleak industrial estate in a place that might be Acton. And I roll up the shutter and there's nothing in there apart from in one corner a travel rug and there's something under the travel rug that seems to be breathing. Uh, and yeah, Alexi, you're supposed to be doing a bit of narration that advances the story. Yeah? Well, what do you know? I won the BBC Audio Drama Award for Best Scripted Comedy in 2019! Sorry about that, folks. Are we still carrying on with this? Yeah, of course. Good to be home. It's funny your dad and Jason aren't back yet. Yeah. Hiya. Is everything OK? Uh, no. You need to come to the clinic now. The Lewitt's clinic? Uh, no. The other one. Oh. Do I need to bring Jason's sister? Yeah. You need to bring her. All right. I'll see you there. Where are we going? And why are you driving so fast? We need to go somewhere as quickly as possible. Dr Keynes has spoke to your dad and, and she was a bit concerned about some of Jason's test results. Oh. Okay. What is this place? I thought we'd be going to the Lord's Hospital where Jason goes for his dialysis. Why have we come to this big Victorian house in the Widow? Looks like a care home for the elderly. What's this place called? It's not a care home, love. And it doesn't have a name. Well, this place looks so crappy from the outside, but inside it's gorgeous. God, those flowers are gorgeous. Good evening, Mrs. Savari. Dr. Keynes is with our son, Jason. Ah, yes, of course. Where do we need to go? Your husband is in the family waiting room. Don't worry, madam, we've got everything in hand. And this must be his sister, right? That's right. So, a sweetheart, we'll just transfer you into this wheelchair. Oh, I don't need a wheelchair. I'm fine. We want to take the best care of you that we can. Honestly, I'm fine. Sit down, love. What? You should sit down, darling. But sit uh... down, love. Oh. OK. Lovely. Right, now, Mrs. Savari, if you'd like to go through there into the family waiting room, we'll get Jason and his sister all set up. Set up? Nothing to worry about. God. I hate waiting. Don't you? I know. I'm sure that the operation's done by now. Poor Jason. Hey, see that woman over there? With the flowery top? Yeah. Isn't she married to him? Oh, what's his name? Oh, yeah. That's Mickey McGee's wife. He'll probably be having some bullets dug out of him, most likely. No wonder she looks worried. Well, when you're an assassin, stands to reason some folk will want to assassinate your back. You know, I've always thought it was very far-sighted of the organised crime community in the Northwest to found and fund this state-of-the-art medical facility. You know, equipped with the latest apparatus from all around the world and staffed by doctors and nurses who are the very best. If perhaps a little mercenary in their outlook. 
a place where us and our associates can have our inevitable injuries and wounds treated without attracting any questions from the authorities. Are you sure we're doing the right thing here? It's a bit late to be having doubts now, isn't it? When Jason was born and we learned he'd probably get really sick one day, we made a decision then and we need to stick to it. And we've given his sister everything and asked nothing of her an entire life. Exactly. Ah, lad, he's always been sickly. Too bad, the poor little pig. We had to think rather quickly. Cos strategy's how we Mr. and Mrs. Savari. What's happening, Doctor? I'm afraid there's been a complication with the operation. With Jason? No, not with Jason. That part of the kidney transplant went extremely well. Assuming there is no rejection, which we don't expect, he'll soon be well fit and healthy. Healthier than he's ever been in his life. Oh, thank God. No, I'm afraid it's the kidney donor, your daughter, who has the problem. What's happened? She suffered a very severe reaction to the anaesthesia. She had a series of strokes on the operating table. I can't believe it. We were only shopping this morning. There's been extensive nerve damage. I'm sorry to have to tell you that there is every chance your daughter will only make a partial recovery. So, what does that mean? Well, the most likely prognosis is that she will be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Oh, that's awful. A, a dream was that if one day it was needed, she could donate one of her kidneys to her beloved brother. You know, normally uh, children have years of counselling and support uh, before they're allowed to donate an organ. But she is devoted to a brother. She would never have minded giving him a kidney. Well, if I was to be completely honest, I'd say she did seem to mind. She put up something of a fight. We had to sedate her quite heavily in order to get her onto the operating table, and that didn't help. That was just temporary panic. At heart, Jason's sister is a virtuous, obedient girl. And she loves her brother more than anything in the world. It's true. If she suffered to help Jason, I believe in time she'll come to accept her disability. And anyway, Jason's such a good boy. I know he'll dedicate his life to looking after his sister. Just as she looked after him. Good. Um, well, <laughs> that's good. It ain't like your others. Lines of succession need guarantees. Fair shares for sisters and brothers. But, but kidneys, kidneys don't, don't grow on trees. Jason's sister lives with Monday night. Jason's sister more than self satisfied. Jason's sister Jesus knows that we tried. But we treasure you for what's on the inside. We treasure you for what's on the inside. Why do we always have to come here? The nameless park. It's your favourite place in the old world, sis. You can pretend you're in a fairy tale. I know, but can we not go shopping or something? I'm bored. Don't count the days. Make the days count. Jade. Yeah, sure, another time. Yeah, look, there's those foreign weeds you like with the black leaves. Oh, yeah. I don't think it looks ugly, but what would I know? If you love it, you love it. That's the main thing. Why am I forced? Why don't I just park it up here so you can have a look at it? I'm not that bothered. We can keep going. We can go back, in fact. I've had enough. I'm happy to go back. Ah, uh, let's get a bit more air first. Besides, I'm enjoying the exercise. It's good to wear in these new trainers. <sighs> you okay, sis? Muscle spasms. <sighs> God, yeah, they are awful, aren't they? Anything I can do? No. no there isn't really, is there? Listen, I'm just going for a wander down to the river. I'll take you with me, but the ground is so uneven. Don't want me hitting a roost and you getting tipped out again. Oh, it's starting to rain, look. I won't be long. What you doing? Where are you going? I told you, I'm going to look at the river. I won't be long. But, 
pull my hair. I won't be long. Promise. Promise. The Nameless Park starred Louis Emmerich, George Fouracres, Sean Mason, Alice McMillan and Claire Sweeney. It was written and narrated by Alexi Sale and adapted for radio by Graham Duff. The original music was written and arranged by Tim Sutton. The producer was Joe Nunnery. It was a BBC Studios production. Next time, Maxine Peake stars as a lawyer who, having returned home from work without a house key, begins to see her seemingly peaceful street in a sinister new light. Alexis.